So today I am discussing two of my favorite modalities that I am certified in, and that is Compassionate Inquiry, that is uh, developed by Dr. Gabor Mate, and then Compassion Key, which was developed by uh, Edward Mannix. So I am going to discuss why I love both these modalities and how I combine them together with my clients. And I'm trained in a lot more modalities, but these are the two that I use the most and that I find the most beneficial for my clients and actually for myself as well. In my own personal life, I use uh, the techniques that I've learned and they have really, really helped me to heal aspects that were really hard to heal before. So let's dive right in and let's start with compassionate inquiry. Compassionate inquiry gets to the root core issue of what is going on. It is a psychotherapeutic approach, so it is very in-depth and it goes really, really deep. So we tend to have these stories that we play in our mind and we get these stories from our experiences in life and through difficult situations and trauma. We also have stories about ourselves that we tell. And a lot of times the stories that we tell about ourselves to ourselves are negative. That's where the critical mind comes in and they are uh, adopted through trauma and difficult situations. So what compassionate inquiry does is it gets us out of the story. It helps us to understand the story, but then we want to get out of the story because we want to stop replaying that story over and over. And so how do you do that? You do that by getting to the root core issue. So this is very different than talk therapy where you talk and talk and talk about the story, which actually can influence the story even more. Compassionate inquiry is about zooming in, pinpointing what is really going on. What are the belief systems that you made up about yourself that were created from trauma? What are the coping mechanisms that you've developed because of this trauma? And what is necessary for you to heal? And what tools do you need to learn to create new pathways in the brain and challenge those belief systems so you can come back to your authenticity? The authentic self, which is underneath the limiting belief systems that you've created about yourself, that you're believing in and that you've believed in most of your life. So we want to completely abolish those belief systems. And so then we can really tap into what is underneath here, the real self, your true self, your authentic self that's been hidden underneath all this pain and trauma. So the reason why we suffer so much is because we are disconnected from our authenticity. And this is from trauma. So trauma means wound. Trauma isn't actually the event that happened. It's what you made this event mean about yourself that you were carrying with you. The event happens or events happen, but we adapt and we move through it. What the wound really is, is how you feel about yourself, how this crushed your self-esteem, how this made you believe you were unworthy or that you were not good enough or that you were a burden or that you don't matter. But these limiting beliefs are never true because everybody is worthy and everybody is good enough. And so we want to challenge those beliefs and compassionate inquiry gets to the root so we can find out what is really going on and how you can take the steps to heal. Compassionate inquiry always blows my mind because it is so quick. It gets to the root so quickly. Each session, just one session, we will get to the root of what is going on in present day and how that's connected to the past and what we need to do to take the steps to heal. Okay, and now there's Compassion Key by Edward Mannix. Now, Compassion Key helps us to understand our shadow and acknowledge our shadow. So how I use these two in combination is Compassionate Inquiry pulls up the shadow and we start to identify the shadow aspects. So the shadow aspects are the unconscious parts or repressed parts that we have not faced. And so we are pulling those up to be seen. So what Compassion Key does is that it brings in compassion and acknowledgement. So what we want to do when we have these parts that are pulled up isn't feel very good when you see them. Sometimes there can be shame that comes up and judgment 
And so compassion key is a form of inner child work and deep work that acknowledges these shadow parts and holds these shadow parts because these shadow parts want to be acknowledged. They need to be acknowledged for them to heal. It's not about pushing away the parts that you don't think are worthy. It's about bringing them up and acknowledging them and holding them. And then when you hold them, you're holding yourself, you're holding your inner child, who is usually the one that is suffering within, the child that still lives within you, right? There's a lot of situations we go through in childhood that are scary for children. Just going to school can be a trauma. I know it was for me. Going to school every day was really hard for me and that became a trauma. And that's just regular life, right? Let's, that's not talking about all the other things that people go through, like abuse and neglect. So when we do this deep inner child work and acknowledge these lost and repressed and shadow aspects, we are shining light on them and loving them. And then we can understand ourselves on a deeper level and we can start to heal. So a session with me looks like this, you know, bringing up all the stuff pinpointing what is going on and then bringing in a lot of love, inner child work and compassion. Um, and this is where people get tend to get quite emotional. So a lot of emotion comes up, a lot of compassion, a lot of understanding where maybe there was an understanding before and there was a lot of judgment towards themselves. And so this is a really, really healing exercise to do. And the two of them together just work so wonderfully. There's also something really magical about Compassion Key when it's done because it shifts the person when they are in it. It shifts them right there. Something about acknowledging and giving compassion to the parts within ourselves shifts you immediately. Because that's all healing really is, is acknowledging these lost parts and then giving them love. Like I said before, it's not about getting rid of anything. Healing is about acknowledging all of our parts, loving all of our parts, and realizing eventually that there is nothing to fix and there's nothing to change. You are not broken. You never were broken. But it takes going through the healing process to understand that and get to that point where you have this deep self-acceptance of where you are. And that includes all of your quirks. And a lot of our quirks do come from trauma and they do adapt to our personality and become parts of our personality. So we can see which ones are real and which ones are just coping mechanisms that can actually start to fade away. We won't need those coping mechanisms anymore because we're starting to heal. And so these parts of our personality that we believed were us start to drop away. And so they never really were us. And so what is underneath is the authentic self, your authenticity. And that is the goal, to step deeper and deeper into your authenticity because it's the disconnection from our authenticity which keeps us in suffering. If you have any questions, be sure to comment in the comments below. I'd love to have a conversation with you. You can also connect with me on my Instagram page and the link is also in the description below. I'm currently offering discovery sessions. So if you would like to book a session to see if we are a right fit, the link is also in the description below. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe and share with your friends. My name is Tess. Thanks for watching.